Welcome back to the LED Project Podcast. My name is Kyle Krieger. I am super excited tonight to have Sally and Sarah from Practically Positive Teaching on the podcast. Ladies, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, we t- it's crazy because we were just talking for like five minutes on you know, prior to recording and it's talking about the podcast. I love it because it's so crazy that we like literally just met, but we've talked yeah. like we talk like we've known each other forever, which okay. is. That's what teachers do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So we're super excited to have you on our podcast. This is, oh, I should say this is, oh my goodness, 107, episode 107. Are you serious? Congratulations yeah, to that. Yeah, we, you know, it's crazy. Like I was telling you a little bit, we, last year in 20, let's see, 2017, we did 16 episodes. Wow. So we, we set a goal that we were going to just do 52 this year. Okay. And we set a goal that half of those we were going to interview teachers. Okay. And we've now done, this will be our 87th. Wow. And we've done, I think you're our 70th or 71st interview. Wow. Very cool. We so are so honored to be here. We are. Thank you. Thank you. We're honored to have you. So, so yeah, but we're... Uh, we, we're all about the positivity and, and self-care. We were talking about that prior. So before we get way off track again, could you just tell us, you, you know, kind of your backstories as, as teachers and, and how your uh, partnership came to be? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've been teaching. This is now my, I'm starting my seventh year yeah. now. That's crazy. This I is, can't believe it. I'm starting my seventh year now. Um, this is my 10th year. 10th year. And, um, I started, so I started off, um, in like title one school. And, um, I, that's kind of like been where I've kind of been at. And then I kind of, um, I ended up getting, um, a job at another school in a more affluent area. And, um, that's where I ended up meeting McCarthy. So yes. I, I call her McCarthy cause I'm so used to addressing <laughs> yeah, her. At- no, that's fine. That's uh, the, the last name. We know how that is. is. We're in that last name mode. It's not even the miss though. We dropped the miss. Yeah, we dropped just- the miss. It's just McCarthy. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but basically I use her. So Sarah has math videos that she has. So she has like a whole McCarthy math academy program and that year the year that I actually met her is when I started I moved into third grade I started teaching third grade and third grade math you know initially is easy but teaching some of those things challenging can be a challenge to third graders so I remember um I like a colleague of mine introduced me to her videos and I watched them all the time and the kids loved them and all this stuff and then one day I was walking down the stairs and I ran into and we saw Sarah filling up a water bottle at our water fountain. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the math lady. And, you know, she's the YouTube person. And I like fangirl because that's what we do as teachers. Right. We fangirl at math video people. You fangirl before you saw me and then you fangirl. And like, then yeah, I, I okay. just, All right. yeah. <laughs> and so um, I was like, oh my gosh, can you come up to my classroom? My kids would freak that a YouTube star was like in our school. And she was like, yeah, of course. Let's do yeah. this. So I had her come up and the kids did. They were like crying like they saw a rock star. They were <laughs> so she funny. was running around. Because I'm just this person at another school. I'm just yeah. like, hi, how are you guys? Because there was she's a math coach, and so they were having a math coach meeting at her, at her school. And so um the kids were like they, she was signing their math journals and the kids were like, Oh my gosh, that's my math journal. And, um, and then all, it was, it was so crazy. <laughs> right? Look at that. That's, that was pretty much my face. Nerding right there. out. So, totally nerding out. So Man, that's, but it, it's the world we live in. Like, it is. It really is. And it's so funny for me because like, okay, so we both come from Title One backgrounds. Yeah. And when I met her, I was like, it, just the face that you were making, I was like, are you, are you really like fangirling right now? Because I'm just, I'm like, hi, I'm Sarah McCarthy, and I'm really just like you. So, yeah, right. Like, Come on up. So I did, and when I saw her teaching, I have never seen anybody teach with as much energy and enthusiasm as I do. And so walking away from that, I was like, I ha- I, I just kind of stood back in awe, just watching, like, we're going to work together. We are. And I have to work with her, you know? And so I brought you did a, a math video, like a rap, a quadrilaterals <laughs> rap. And I was like, look at this girl go. 
And I took that video and I brought it to my principal and said, you know, we need to bring her over here. She needs to be part of this school. And so when you came over, then things just kind of started going. Yeah, and it was funny because when I did that, that was so outside of my it was. comfort zone. <laughs> it was like, it, was it so didn't look like it though. It was so outside of my comfort zone, but it was kind of like deep down, we all have this, I feel like deep down, all teachers have this image of like, who they want to be as a teacher. Right. And right. so like, I finally was like, you know what? I've always wanted to do like a song or a rap. <laughs> I'm so just going to do now. it. <laughs> and so now, now I can't stop. Now, now I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to turn this into like an academic yeah. song. And so it's something that we like always like to do. Um, and so it got to that point where we were just like, okay, like what else, what else do we need to do? Yeah. And so that's kind of how it spun, how practically positive teaching kind of like came into being. And it did, and it kind of spun because of negative things that we were mm -hmm. going, what's happening in our yeah. environments. Like one day I caught her out on the playground and I was like, you, you're right. What's going on? Yeah. And so we met up and we were talking about it. And it was just some of the challenges that you face as a teacher with, you know, your workmates and the pressures from the district and the pressures from your students and mm -hmm. parents and all this stuff. And we were and talking, we we're like, you know, we, we should do something. We should change the conversation of how people perceive teachers, how mm -hmm. teachers perceive themselves. Yeah. And, you know, we started pushing out. We didn't even know really what we, we had, were getting into. We didn't really know. But, and I was kind of like, you know, I've always wanted to do something where I was like, you know, bringing positivity back to, you know, teachers. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have happy kids unless you have happy teachers. And so it kind of just spun into that. And so, you know, it, it got to the point where we were like, I just want to change the education conversation. Right. And so then it kind of spiraled. And I already kind of had my little Instagram and it was practically positive teaching because I'm a big Mary Poppins fan. And so, you know, Mary Poppins is always like practically perfect in every way. And teaching is not practically perfect <laughs> at all. Nope. And so, but it's not practically perfect, but you can be practical and you can be positive. And that can make mm -hmm. all the difference. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, you know, what if we kind of, what if we just team up? Let's just make like a motivational video for teachers and let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of how practically positive teaching. And so um, we painted a wall in her My garage. garage chalkboard. It's so awesome. It's it so like, awesome. It was over Christmas break. We were like, all right. Let's do this. That's pretty much what this whole thing has been. Okay. It's kind of just been like, you know what? This is like what we're passionate about. This is what we feel like we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this is what we feel like we need to say. So, um, and really deep down, I wanted to be a teacher because I wanted to write on a chalkboard. <laughs> and then by the time we, you, you know, became a teacher, they had smart boards and whiteboards. And so, which I'm fond of. So yeah. So we she just does all the talk painted. Talk. She's she's awesome. awesome. We painted a wall in her um, garage chalkboard mm -hmm. and we made our first First promo video and that kind of it's crazy because you know in that promotional little video about practically positive teaching we talked about how you know we wanted to change the education conversation and all but you takes, have a voice to speak yeah, up but and you, you know. need to speak up and um, you know teachers need to kind of take that con you know that pride and that control for their jobs and we kept saying change the education conversation mm -hmm. and you know bring pos all it takes is a little positivity a little hard work an ear to listen and eyes to see and a voice to speak up and it just kind of like it's it just, just started awesome. growing and it's our teamwork is really cool because she's like she said she does a lot of the chalkboard drawings but then i'm more of the techie one of, of taking things and putting them into the videos and just it's been a really cool process of her idea is coming and I'm like, Oh yeah, let's take your idea and then let's do this. Yeah. And then she's like, okay. And it just kind of beefs up to become something that's really cool and fun for mm -hmm. us. So, yeah. Um, you know, we, we have such a similar story. Um, yeah. I was going through a really rough patch. Uh, so I grew up in Wisconsin and I moved to Houston. That was my first job in a title one school. Okay. And after four years, I had the principal and I kind of had a, she just kind of was like, you should move on not without so many words. Mm -hmm. I got moved to Wilkie's and I got moved to Wilkie school and, and having gone through a year where, you know, the principal made it clear that she didn't want me around. Like I was in a really bad place, like personally. Yeah. And Wilkie saw it. Like he saw that it wasn't my teaching or my pedagogy. He was like, it's what's going on outside. And, yes. and, he, and, and he was like, 
he didn't say it outright, but he was like, you need new people in your life. You need to kind of shed some old friendships and, and, and stuff like that. And, and that was the start of us. And the word, you know, the same thing you guys said, the, we are, the words we use is value. Like we want to add value back to teachers because I, I don't know if you saw the, the new Time magazine covers with the stories about yes. teachers, which is just insane. But that's what we love about the podcast is we're just, we're just telling teachers stories because there's so many amazing things that are going on in classrooms every day. So, um, you know, that's why we're here. But like you said, I, I think it's overwhelmingly like there's so many great teachers and there's so much positivity in education, but for some reason, the negativity is just so much louder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I love the way you just said that because unfortunately the negativity is loud. It's so and bad. it's kind and that's and that's exactly it's how we came to be too because yeah. we were like how do we make positivity even louder right because right. that's and that's I think you know the power of you know your podcast and the power of like you know what so many teachers are doing is okay what can we do to make that conversation louder mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. And it's, it's, so, it's, I think people kind of get like, oh yeah, positivity, like all fluffy pink unicorns and everything yeah. like that. And it's like, no, it takes discipline and it takes strength in order for yes. you to adjust your mindset mm -hmm. because just mm -hmm. recently to a new school that yeah. is title one, we went back from, from a, an A affluent school into chose, choosing to go into a title mm -hmm. one school again. And it has been hard and it has been us having to retrain our brains to be like, we cannot be thinking like this. No. We have to be thinking positive. We have to shut down the negative people in our lives, the negative conversations going on mm -hmm. and in, in terms of ourselves yeah. too, and believe in these kids and believe in us that we can do this. Yeah. And so, what do you, so I think, you know, the important thing with positivity is you said is, is, you don't all like not everybody is always going to be positive. So how do you, how do you then, or how would you advise teachers, you know, when you have those negative moments, um, you know, how do you, I guess, cope, cope deal that neither one of those are the right word I'm looking for, but how do you approach those negative moments? Because I think those moments can be really a teachable moment for a lot of kids. 100%. Well, I think it's all about being real. Um, and that's one of the things that we, you know, we try to say all the time, like, yes, our name is practically positive teaching, but like Sarah said, it's not like we're skipping around on rainbows and, and unicorns right. and, and it, <laughs> it, I, might, it might seem like, it, it might seem outside, like that. And that's, you know, I'm a big fan of just singing everywhere I go, but at the right. same time, you know, we're, we're big fans of that. But, um, at the same time, you know, reality does sink in yep. and it is hard and it's not easy. Um, you know, and so, and I feel like we have people who message sometimes and, and they're like, okay, I'm going through this really difficult situation. Um, what do, how do I get out of this? Whether they're dealing with a lot of times it's like negative coworkers, mm -hmm. you know, if you, you get around it's, those <laughs> negative, it's so easy and like negative friends. Yes. It's so easy to be like, oh yeah, that is ridiculous. Yes. And then before yeah. you know it, you're like this angry just, person right. and I was finding that with myself right and I was finding, like oh my gosh I'm feeling I am feeling like such an angry ogre right now just because and I was having a wonderful day but it was just because I got caught up in a situation right. and I think you know to get out of that you have to go back to your purpose what's your purpose what is your reason and so constantly having those um you know those we're huge affirmation people. We're huge affirmation people with mm -hmm. our kids, yes. with our students. We're huge affirmation people with ourselves and always going back to, you know, um, that you can do this. Like you can make it through and being honest, like it's okay to tell someone I'm not okay with this conversation you know? And sometimes it gets hard because you're afraid of like what people are going to think like, Oh, there goes. And that that's happened to me. Oh, there goes Sally, you know, with her flower petals being all positive all the time, you know, okay. but at the end of the day, you have to go back to what is your purpose? And as teachers, our purpose is we are there for the kids. Mm -hmm. We're there for the kids and we want to leave their lives better than when we found them. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. Absolutely. And I think that, like you were saying with the negative coworkers, that that can become a thing. And I think what's cool about 
what, what you need to find is a person, not even like we say our, our positive board of directors, just yeah. a couple people in your lives that you can go and you can vent to, but it's like a prevent, it's a, a productive venting mm -hmm. session that is more right. positive. Yeah. and that's kind of what we have and we totally call each other out like yeah if, if we're yeah. in the negativity we'll be like you know what that's mm -hmm. what is the good name what are three goods about your day today mm -hmm. what are three things positive right. things that happen in your day today mm -hmm. and to shut that down because when you're negative it just spews on other people yeah. and you need to have your people that you can vent to to change conversations but not to to just spew out into the world you know with negativity so one of our strategies that we use is, is that this, this is good because. So when something bad is happening in, in your life, and we do this with our yes. students too, is like, like, what is the positive breakthrough that's trying to happen? Yeah. Because this is happening and it's negative, what is the, this is good because, yeah. da, 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 da. and just trying to look for that. And when you strive for that, you usually find it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, I... And I'd be interested to hear what you think about what, you know, positivity seems like such a better option, but, but why is it so much easier to be negative? I feel like it, it's in terms of, in terms of making yourself feel better about a situation. Why is it when we know positivity is better? Why, why do so many people go negative? Well, so I am someone personally who deals with major anxiety. Um, it's something that I've dealt with for a while and it wasn't until recently that I realized that was the label. <laughs> um, I would just get so caught up in, I, I would get so caught up in it. Sometimes it does seem so much easier to go negative. And I think, I mean, that's just it. It's easier. It's easier to get caught up with a bunch of people um, to say, oh, this is bad, and this is bad, and this is bad. And you know what it is? It's because it takes strength to say, you know what? Let me pick myself up and let me do something about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's even at this school we're at right now, you know, we just we left a school that was like one of the top performing schools in our district. And we just went to one of the lowest performing schools in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we chose to go there because we were like, you know what? Let's go and let's, let's practice what we preach. This yeah. is not an easy situation. Right. But you know what? Let's see what we can do to make a difference. And we've let's, been feeling a, a pull to go anyway. And we've been we've... feeling a pull anyways. But I'm, we're not going to lie. It has been very hard. I mean, it has been very hard. And, you know, a lot of times it can be like, oh my goodness, this isn't in place and this isn't yeah. in place. And I'm going in at six o'clock in the morning and not leaving till eight o'clock at night. And I still haven't finished my to-do list. And, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, I have, You're I'm, I'm going to quit. Yeah. I'm going to quit. That's it. Let me pack up my classroom decorations right now. It's done. And to be honest, that's literally where we just were like two weeks ago. Yeah. We were like, in what did we do? In that roller coaster. Yeah. But then we had to get real yep. and we had to say, okay, that's the easy way out. Yep. We are here. Sure. What can we do to make a difference? And going back to that whole, this is good because situation. And locking into your purpose too. Locking in to, you know, who you are meant to be and what your purpose is. And just kind of saying, you know, what can I do to leave this place better than I found it? Because really, in any situation, you totally can do that. You can, you, what, is, what is that positive little mm -hmm. thing? Even if you're not feeling that, what can you do to help other people out? Mm -hmm. And I think that is another strategy, mm -hmm. is you know, when you're feeling at the lowest of the lowest of the low, which can happen. It's reality in education. It can happen. What can you do to help somebody else? Can you help another teacher out? Can you, you know, just tell someone that they're doing a good job? You know, can you, um, you know, help out a student and in, in a, a different way that you wouldn't normally help them out? You know, it's giving back can really help you in that situation, but it is sometimes easier to go negative. Um, and it takes strength and it takes practice to really get yourself out of that and be positive. 
so what you know comparing your prior school to the to the school you're at now what 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 do you see as the challenges your students face maybe not academically but just you know culturally or at home because i think i mean i know i taught in only title one schools yeah. in, in houston so i mean i understand it but just kind of compare you know the the general life situation of the kids you had versus the kids you have now because i th- I think the one thing I really learned, because I grew up super sheltered, like small town, Wisconsin, like very tight community, good education, good family. And then I went to Houston and I didn't realize that world existed. Like you you really, and it took me two or three years to understand like how kids don't prioritize school yeah, and not, not like I don't want to do school, but they just are unable. It's just so far down their priority list. So kind of describe the the environments or, you know, kind of more the situation the kids are in compared. I think it's just like basic survival needs. You're mm-hmm. trying to meet those first, you know, have they eaten this morning? Um, are their clothes washed where they feel confident about coming to school? Um, you know, one thing that's been interesting and, and this is actually so, um, we're coaches at our school, but we also teach at the same time. We kind of wear 50 hats. Um, you know how, you know, you know how, how it goes. <laughs> and so what was interesting, so this is my first year where I haven't actually had like my own, like I am a third grade teacher in my classroom type of situation. And I have 18 students. In the yeah. And I have yeah. 18 students yeah. and I see them all day. It's, it's kind of, um, the whole, our whole situation is very, very unique. Um, but I love it. Like we've yeah, grown so to good. just absolutely love it. What's been interesting, though, is that, you know, we do car rider duty, you know, in the morning. And what's been interesting is in the beginning, when we were first doing it, the, some of the kids that we would have at our school, they were coming to school, I mean, fists clenched, mm-hmm. angry, crying, mad, like anything would set them off because God knows what was going on at home. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I personally, at our other school, I never saw that. You know, they were coming to school and they were like, hello, and it was all hugs, and they trusted you right away, right? They trusted right. you. That's a good you point. didn't have to work yeah. at getting their trust. They just loved you. Um, here we do, though. Here yeah, it's, it's like, you know, constant. it's like, who are you? Yeah. Um, because of this school, yeah. at this school, they've had a huge turnover rate. They haven't really seen the same principal they haven't had the same teachers kind of in their schools. I mean, there's been a, a few teachers, um, yeah. like phenomenal teachers that have like stayed there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, they, they see a huge turnover rate. And they're fearful right now that we're going to leave. Yeah. You know, they keep saying like, are you going to be here next year? So they're, they're, they're already asking yeah. those questions. In September there are, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, goodness. And so you just, and I think, what hit me is I'm like, you just got off the bus and you're angry. Like you just got off the bus and you're sad. Like what, what is going on? And you know, I'm not some, I've always been that type of person where I'm like, I'm not going to say, Oh, I understand your situation because I don't like, that's not fair to say. And so I, you know, one of the things I always say to kids is I'm like, you know, I, I don't walk in your shoes. I, I can't, fully 100% understand your situation. Mm -hmm. But what you do, what I can tell you is that I am here for you and I am here to listen and help out any way you need me to help out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until you are ready to trust me and open up to me. Like I am, Mm -hmm. I am here and I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so what we started um, doing at car riders we just brought our little speaker out there and we just started playing music. And before you know it, we were like, cause we love to sing and dance. And um, so we just started like being goofballs and just dancing. And then before you know it, slowly, some of these kids, they would get out of their cars and they would have that face. And then they would see us doing these like dorky moves. Right. And they thought it was so <laughs> funny. And then before, now we have little kindergartners and even some of the fifth graders who are like too cool for school, they were even jumping and, in and they're, yeah. you know, dancing to the popsicle song and, you know, all those little right. things. Um, but I think that's what the difference is. It's, you know, they're there is those that survival needs and it's, it's that whole, you know, the trust thing because they haven't had a lot of consistency Mm -hmm. and just school wise, they haven't had a lot of consistency. 
and I've even had a couple of students who've come to me saying, like, I've looked at them and I'm like, I feel like the way that you look at me, you're trying to figure me out. Like mm -hmm. you haven't figured me out yet. And I said, but I'm going to be here. And that's okay that you're trying to figure me out because I'm trying to figure you out mm -hmm. too. So now that's kind of how we greet each other in the morning is with a hug. And then we're just like, I'm still trying to figure you out, but mm -hmm. you know, and it's just kind of understood that that's how it's, yeah, it's happening. So, so what advice, on, you know, kind of on that vein, would you give teachers because you know, it's going to be a roller coaster and, you know, to really build that trust, how do you, how do you stay, I guess, present in that relationship and, and stay positive with it? Because, you know, like I said, I've, you know, it took me a long time. Like the kids see, I mean, I taught a school that was 90% Hispanic and the other 10% was African American. And they see this white boy from Wisconsin who's got, you know, his country music blaring out of his room every minute of the day. And they're like, like, who are you? You don't, they're like, you don't, you don't understand us. Exactly. So, yeah. so how, how do you, I guess, persist or, you know, just stay with it? Like what advice would you give? I would say you have to be you. Like you have to bring you in the classroom. We were just talking with yeah. a group of teachers and they said, kids know when you're being fake. Mm -hmm. They know when you're Absolutely. being fake. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we have, I have a group of like 35 to almost 40 fifth grade kids that come into my classroom. And when they first came in, I'm the type of teacher, like I will jump on a desk and I will teach from a desk mm -hmm. and I will wear hats and I will pull things out of bags and I, that, and I will wear like, like glasses that light up, you know, just ridiculous. And it's like, they look at me and they're like, you're having so much fun up there. And I'm like, cause I love this, you know? And it's kind of just like, they're all of a sudden like, okay, she loves this. So we're just going to go with guess it. Too. We're just going to yeah. go with it because, and a big thing is, cause she, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I'm not about yelling at kids, you know, you know, in, in stuff like that. And a lot of times that's what they're used to yeah. is they're used to like people yelling at them and attacking mm -hmm. them for like every little thing. Cause that's what sometimes people right. think that they have to do when really that sets them off. So so I, I, yeah, I think the biggest advice is like, be you, you know, be who you are. And if you are your real authentic self, then the kids are going to, and if you love what you're doing, the kids are going to buy into them. Yeah. To go on with the, that they're being kind of like all day mm -hmm. with other teachers or with their families, even that's kind of mm -hmm. the culture is to have those sidebar conversations with them where you're in private saying, you know, you're acting, we're still pretty firm. Not pretty. We are pretty. We are. Yeah, firm. we are. Um, we hold them to very high expectations, and if they can't cut it in our class, then we have you know consequences that occur and all of that. But to be to have those sidebar conversations where they then see, okay, you're not trying to attack me. You're actually trying to build this, use this opportunity to build a relationship with me. I think mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. 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 Always yeah. building up. Yep. Yeah. And I, th and I think the lesson that Wilkie taught me that I really, it, it took me the only time is, is not to take those situations personal. Like when they come at you or, yeah. or, or those, I, I just felt like so many times, you know, it was personal and, and, and I can look back and this kind of takes me to where I want to, you know, we talked about self-care a little bit prior, but you know, I can look back at the times where I was combative with kids cause they were combative with me. And it, it was always the times when I felt the worst, about myself, you know, personally, and not just as a teacher. So, you know, on that vein, what, what is the importance of, of, you know, it's, it's a buzzword right now, teacher self-care, but I mean, in, in reality, you know, what is the importance of it? And, and, you know, what are the things that you're doing or things that teachers can do to really take better care of themselves? You know, it's funny. I think the reason because I feel like all of a sudden recently it was like teach yourself care, teach yourself care. I think it's huge that it's that it's huge. a buzzword. I think that's one of the best words, yeah. words the in best. education that you could have. Because I think for so long it's been like we feel guilty if yeah. we take care right. of ourselves. Like, yeah. how dare you take care of yourselves? You have the summers. You know, we all love that saying. All teachers, we love that saying that we get the summers off and we you get the day off three off. and you got the weekends yeah. off, you know. And so I think for so long, teachers are like, oh, I have to stay 
you know, so late because if not, people will think I'm not working hard enough mm -hmm. or I have to, I have to work nonstop because if I don't, then, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, the best. And it's just, and it's one of those things where it's like, wait a minute, pause, because I think we, Sarah and I can both agree that we are workaholics. We are 100%. Totally workaholics. Um, because, you, and you know this, you know, when you're a teacher, but also doing your little side thing, like, you know, with us with Practice the Vows of Teaching, that's an extra thing that, you know, that, that you're doing. And so we are workaholics. We will admit that. Mm -hmm. The first step is admitting, right? Hi, I am right. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I am a workaholic. Right. But at the same time, it, you have to almost separate, like, work, work with, like, your passion. Yep. Right. And I think teacher self-care, like working on your passion, that's self-care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, cause we feel alive when we're working on practice. Oh yeah. Teaching. So yeah. We, whenever we're meeting to work on, you know, a new video that we're going to launch or the conference that we're going to be speaking at, or some kind of music idea that we're going to incorporate in the classrooms mm -hmm. together, it livens us up and we both leave like, Oh ah! yeah. And that's how you should. That, that, that is self-care, you know? We're and but also that. knowing that it is okay to take a break, knowing that it's okay to close your laptop, mm -hmm. it's okay to like not scroll through Instagram sometimes because you know that can be a problem. You're like scrolling through Instagram and you're like, oh my gosh, these all these teachers are doing all this stuff, and then you start comparing yourself, which is like that's one of our like big things, big things that we talk about is comparison, comparison, um, disease. The comparison disease. But, um, you know, we also, it, it's, we need to realize that it's, it's okay to take a second and, and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, we've even had to check each other on that. You know, we've had our moments where we're like, you know, I just need, I just need a moment. <laughs> you know, yeah. so right. it's, it's like, good, we but, need to stop teacher guilt. <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't, if you don't grade all of these papers and like get them back right away, like chill, it's right. okay. Like life will still go on and it'll be okay. And I think for me, I'm more of like a daily basis teacher self-care person. Like I, I enjoy waking up early because I have, you know, a good three hours that I wake up and I'm, I'm doing a little bit of work. I work out, I have some time to write and to read and fill my mind with positivity. We both do that before we get to work, that it sets the tone for our day. And that in itself gets you ready rather than waking up and trying to hustle and getting dressed and getting, you know, trying to hustle right. out the door. to have that moment to kind of like ease into your day, but in a positive way, right. where you yeah. feel strong and powerful going into yeah. it. And I think, and, and I know I'm not the only teacher that's ever faced this because I think it happens a lot, but do you see like, I felt like a lot of times people try to use guilt or shame on me for the choices I was making or things like that. Do you notice that? I mean, is that something a lot of teachers are going through is, you know, people trying to motivate you through guilt or shame? Like if you don't do, because I had an, I had an instance once where I was teaching eighth grade history and I was scheduled to be the track coach and the principal came to me and said that if my test scores didn't come up, that she was going to pull my teaching position. Wow. This was at my first. So this was kind of like the beginning of the end with this principal because my test scores were in line with everyone else. And then she went into this thing. Well, you know, cause I was coaching at the time I was coaching football prior to it. And she's like, well, you're a teacher first. Mm -hmm you're going to tell me that it's November and now you're going to tell me that, that if I don't get my test scores up, you're going to pull a teaching position for me. So like th that threat, I think really put me in a bad place. So yeah. do you, I mean, do you notice that? Is that something that's common? I think we're in a very fortunate position because our principal is amazing mm -hmm. and very She's understanding. Supportive. I mean, I followed her. I said it was my 10th year of teaching and I've been under her leadership for nine of those years. Well, she was the AP one year and only one year of her not being my principal. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, it's not a guilt thing that she's putting on me, but that I want to meet her expectations. You right. know, it's a natural like drive to, I know she expects excellence from me and I expect you know, she sets the bar high and I set it even higher for myself. So it's that kind of thing. I don't know. I, she, I wouldn't say she ever guilts her. No. Shames. But I, I totally could see that because it's like, you know, mm -hmm. I, it's like, 
yes, we're teachers and yes, teaching is our passion, but we also have other passions too. Yeah. And yeah. we should not be made fe to feel bad if we have that. And, you know, unfortunately test scores, that's <laughs> test scores is something that can define so much and it can make people, it can make teachers feel so awful and it can Hit make them against each and, other. And, right. Yes. And that's what we talk about when we talk about the comparison disease, you know, test scores. That's mm -hmm. like the big, that's another buzzword, yeah. I think. Yeah. Scores and proficiency. And, but we also have to remember, we will not, as individuals, we will not be happy if we're not doing something that, you know, we're not passionate about. Right. We have to be filling that bucket too. Like we have to be keeping that because what's going to happen is the kids the kids need to know that we have passions and we have things that we love to do. And that's setting an example for them. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we're teachers because we love to teach and we love that the whole aspect of it. But at the same time, we also have hobbies and we also have passions and that wraps it back to self care. Because I know for me, the moment I'm feeling like the worst, I have to think, wait a minute, I haven't been doing something that I'm super passionate about. Mm -hmm. And if we're not doing that, then, you know, and if there's someone in our lives who are kind of like, you know, putting that guilt or putting that pressure on yeah. us, then it's almost a sign like, Ooh, you're, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you're negatively disrupting my life right now. So maybe this is a sign <laughs> that right. I need to back off right. and find you know, a, a group of people that it's going to, going to support my passion. Now, I'm not surrounding yourself with people who are always telling you what you want to hear, but people who are, you know, being those, those critical, or not critical, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, critical friends, the yeah. ones who are like, yeah. not always telling you what you want to hear, reflective but telling listeners. you, reflective listeners, telling you, you know, giving you that, that advice and being list, being a listener. Um, but it's almost kind of goes back to, Ooh, maybe this is a sign that this is not a person I should be around or yeah. not a person uh -huh. that I, can, yeah. you know, yeah. cause I've been there too. I've worked under some interesting individuals as well. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, I think this is an opportunity for me to kind of take a step back mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and see what else is out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and you you bring up that point that culture. I mean, like the culture a principal creates is um, so me. important. It's so important, and and I know that, and I've worked in schools where there was bad like leadership, but you know the teacher still created a good culture and a good environment. But it's it's you know like we were saying earlier, it's so easy for you know uh, uh, if there's negative leadership or. I don't even say negative. I just was in a couple of schools where there was a real lack of leadership for that negativity to grow. But I, I love what you said about the, the reflective friends because, mm -hmm. and maybe you guys face this, like Wilkie and I've been friends five years now and we've been working, you know, we work together, we've been working together the whole time and we've been doing our nonprofit and the podcast for three years. And I still even have to remind myself like to not get defensive with him. Like he'll give me feedback and advice and I'm just like <laughs> biting my tongue. Like, don't tell me that. But you know, he's, you don't know what about. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's just, and, and that, like you said, the chance to learn that that's been one of the greatest things I've learned is, is to really surround myself to, you know, with people who are, are positive, but also give me that feedback. And I know that I've got four or five friends and a couple family members that I can go to and be like, Hey, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I had, I had been in Houston eight years and it was just kind of on a whim. I'm like, you know, I'm going to try to take a chance to go back. Cause I, my, my oldest nephew is three and my youngest one is one. I'm like, I'm going to take a chance to go back. And then in like three days I got offered a job and I'm, and now I was like, now I've really got to decide. Like I didn't yeah. even, I didn't figure I was going to have to decide. <laughs> so, you know, I had some friends and they were just like, I got good advice. They're like, if you go back to Wisconsin and you don't like it, you can always come back. And, and it's, it's those people that are in my life that I think are so important. But, you know, teacher, we're, we're really excited. We're going to be presenting at a, a conference called, uh, uh, it's called the AIE conference. I forget what the AIE stands for. Okay. It's, in, it's in San Antonio in November and, and Wilkie's giving a 20 minute talk on teacher leadership. Cause that's what he's studying for his doctorate. Oh, 
Oh. And he's, um, we're, we're definitely, if, if you're a math person, we're going to have to have you guys back on so you guys can, Wilkie's a math guy. But, oh, okay. you know, he was, he <laughs> was, okay. <laughs> he was, Wilkie was a sixth grade dropout. Oh, wow. And, like, he's, you know, like, literally fought his way back to now about to have his doctorate at the end of, in the spring of 2020. So, I'm really excited for that. But, you know, just like you said, to, to have, to have a friend like that, who is, who, I, and I think you would say that just that shares your passion in such a way, like, and we're, we're a balance. We're, gosh, we're sometimes we're such an odd couple. Cause he's, he's the planner. He's the planner and I'm the dreamer. <laughs> you know, that's, Hello, my name is Sally. <laughs> I am the dreamer. <laughs> yeah. I'm 100% yeah. the dreamer. She keeps all these ideas that she's like, let's try this. Do, do, do. And I'm like, okay. Let's take this and how do we make this work? And tuka, tuka, tuka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. W- Wilkie has reluctantly accepted because I tried. We I tried to get him to start. I I said we should have started a podcast like a year before we actually started. Okay. Like, no, we don't have time for that and all this stuff. And he's been very much like, "All right, I see you." So, so yeah. But gosh, it's a oh man, I can talk to you guys all night. But I I definitely want to be respectful of of your Friday evening. So we're going to just ask a, a couple wrap up questions to, to okay. seal things up here. So in your opinions, um, what is the one thing you think students should be taught? One thing all kids should get taught. That they have greatness inside of them, that they were meant to be somebody great and use their gifts, find out what their gifts and talents are and use them to make this world a better place. That is 100% why Sarah and I are working together because I truly believe that sometimes, you know, depending on where you're growing up, sometimes you're not taught how to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I think so many times kids, no matter where they're from, you know, a lot of times maybe kids are told, oh, you're amazing and you're doing a good job, but you have to intrinsically within yourself believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. And I think teachers have such a power to teach kids that. So I think teachers, we need, as, as teachers, we need to be, um, you know, showing kids and teaching them how to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I love about Hope and Wade King's book, Mm -hmm. The Wild Card, Mm -hmm. is that I just, I just constantly think about that. Like, you don't know what you're going to do in this kid's life, but you might be their wild card because Mm -hmm. we've had our wild cards that have shifted Mm -hmm. the trajectory, the trajectory of our lives, you know, Mm -hmm. and you don't know where that's going to go. Yeah. So. All right. So if, if you could offer, and I know we touched on this a lot, if you could offer advice to a teacher who is kind of really struggling with the negative mindset, what, what advice would you give them? Do you, do you want to live your life like that? Like, yeah. do you, is that how you want to live is to be negative or do you want to try to see if there's a different way? Mm-hmm. I think just, right. does that feel good? Are you enjoying your life being negative? Mm-hmm. In addition to that, you know, sometimes <clears throat> anxiety, because like yeah, I said, that's something yeah. that I deal with a lot. Sometimes anxiety can kind of bring you down mm-hmm. and it's hard. You're like in yeah. this hole almost of, I cannot get out of this. Right. Um, and so one thing that has helped me is creating that like vision board mm-hmm. of like, who do I want to be? Not just as a teacher, but who do I want to be? Um, as a person who, what, what is the lasting impression that I want to make and creating that dream board of that, of who you want to be that right there is where you can go back to all the time. Going back to to your why and your what and your how just kind of falls into place. Yeah. We have, we have, we have a dream board that's, that it's got, it's got Ellen right in the middle of it. Like that's, that's my dream is to be on Ellen. So on ours too. Yeah, she's the best. So, all right. So before we ask you the final question, um, where's the best place for people to connect with you, check your workout and get in touch with you if they, they want to learn more about practically positive teaching? Absolutely. So we're kind of on a variety of um, outlets. So we're on Instagram. I feel like that's where we're like the most active. So practically positive teaching on Instagram. Um, We also are, all of our videos that we we have on our website is on, but we just, we just rolled out our, our um, website. That was like one of our big goals over the summer, over the summer. 
uh, was to get our website. So basically all of our videos and all of the things that we're doing is right on that and it's practicallypositiveteaching.com. But our, and our, it's cool. What I love about Instagram too is kind of like the day to day. We're able to yeah. post our stories on what's going on with us and us being silly and real. And yeah, you kind of get a good glimpse of who mm-hmm. we are. I love, I love the stories feature. I think I spend more time looking at people's stories than I do feeds a lot of time. I don't think I even watch TV anymore because I'm like, Ooh, what is this person, you know, dealing with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I just started the, the Amazon series, Jack Ryan with John Krasinski, the guy from the office. Oh my God. It's so good. I've, I've, we've watched three episodes. We're going to be when we're sick one day. (laughs) That's the only time that we like watch TV. Right. Right, right. So, um, ladies, thank you so much for some of your time. We had, oh man, we're going to have to have you back on. We're going to have to have you back on. Yes, we would love to meet you guys. Yeah, absolutely. In, and like, In yes. real life. We yeah, and, and I think now I'm going to have to make my way down to Chicago if you guys are going to be there. That would be amazing. We are so excited to be able to present this. Yeah. We're actually presenting about the comparison disease. So yes. talk about how comparison can impact yeah. teaching yes okay so down the road many many years down the road uh the final question is what what do y'all want your legacy to be when it's done i just want people to see that we worked hard that we were real people who worked hard went after a dream and did it mm-hmm. and that we were just regular people because yeah you know I, I want to be able to, especially like in this current situation that we're at right now, like I, I feel like we're so passionate about that, about changing that conversation. Mm-hmm. I want us to be able to redefine, um, what a teacher is, yes. you know, yeah. and what we do. And so changing that, I, I yeah. want us to be able to change that conversation. conversation. Absolutely. But showing that like, literally you don't have to do anything crazy. You just have, you can be practical, but also in combination with being positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. And we really enjoyed having you on the podcast. Thank, thank you so you. much for having us. We had a blast. We sure did.